the foreign cars. I'll be in the food, not swipe up beer and then the coal. And crank our cracker speakers to the country radio. We let it rip. When we got the money, let it roll. If we got the gas, it gets a well. Yeah, but that's the way we get down. Get ready to cruise into a world of country music and lively conversation with The Dave Rouse Show. Exclusively on Cruise and Country Radio every Monday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Join host Dave Roush as he brings you the best of country tunes along with engaging interviews, entertaining segments, and a whole lot of fun. Whether you're a diehard country fan or just looking for a good time, tune in and let The Dave Rouse Show be your ultimate destination for Monday evenings. Welcome back to the Dave Rouse Show, where we deep dive into the stories behind the music you love. Today, I'm thrilled to have an incredible, talented guest with us. She's making waves in the country music scene with her catchy tunes and vibrant personality. Please welcome Kirsty Kraus. Welcome, Kirsty. What? Hey, Dave. How's it going? It is going good. We're down here, here in uh, Ajijic, Mexico, and you're there in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, I when I heard you say it blew my mind. I was like, how does that little bit of information not get to my brain? Like I had no idea you were just uh, your whole post you posted up in Mexico. That's crazy to me. That's awesome. <laughs> right. Well, you know, um my wife and I made a decision to uh well, I'll tell you this truthfully, happy wife, happy life. My wife was tired of Florida. <laughs> and we moved to Mexico. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> you know, we've been in June. We've been married twenty years, so you know, uh, I think I have a good formula by never saying no to her. Yeah, I'd say. I feel like that's one day. I hope to have an arrangement like that as well. I mean, a marriage like that as well. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, we're not going to get into your personal life that that deep. All right. Good. <laughs> I, I write songs about it and that's pretty much it <laughs> well you know that's uh i think that's where most of our uh our information comes from that you know we're both song songwriters and singers and songwriters and um yeah so we draw from our experiences and that's what i love about uh country music and and trap rock music it's all uh, about what we've done or what we're getting ready to do mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, um, let's talk about your roots in music. What inspired you to pursue a career in country music and trap music? You know, in general, I've always loved music. I was I was the little girl that was jumping up on picnic tables and taking requests and just singing as much as humanly possible. So it was really just, I, I never had a choice. It was just kind of where it needed, it just knew that that's what I was going to do. And I just think I just posted like a picture on Facebook and it was where I declared that I needed, I wanted to be a singer at seven years, like, well, it was like six years old. And at the, and I saw that there was this Olympic champion on the women's volleyball team and she drew a picture of her like in a jersey and everything. Uh, and it just was something I felt like I had to share because it was just like I knew back then, you know. Well, that's that's an amazing uh, feat. Seven years old, I I didn't start singing really out loud till I was probably twelve, and uh, people couldn't they didn't understand that my voice the way it was. You know, I I didn't sound like a, a twelve year old boy. And what did what did you sound like? 
Well, I didn't, I, I had a really better voice than most 12 year olds, you know? So, I mean, I'm not tooting my horn or anything, but yeah, I, I sang like an adult and, and it freaked people out, I think back then. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I can't say the same. I was really um, like raspy. I was a very raspy voice growing up and didn't really, my mom didn't really realize that I was a singer or was going to be a singer because you couldn't tell by my voice. <laughs> I think, uh, well, what, what really defined a moment when you knew that, that singing was what you wanted to do? Are you there? Yes. Sorry. I, I was trying to hook up the the iPad, the AirPods. I've never done this before. And it started playing something different. <laughs> you heard that. <laughs> no. No, I did not. I have no idea what that meant. It, it was playing your playlist, probably. Technology. Yeah. I, I hate when that happens. I Okay. I was listening to music earlier that I was setting up ready for the, the show and, and it sounded really tinny and it was like, what in the heck? It, I know it's better recorded than that. And my hearing aids connect to Bluetooth. So I was hearing it. I had my headphones on, but it, it sounded weird and it was, it was coming through my hearing aids that I had on and I usually take them off so I don't get feedback from them and my hearing and my headphones. And I was like, man, this sounds weird. Well, it was that. It was coming through. I had to turn my dang Bluetooth off of my hearing aids. Well, I'm determined. I'm going to make this. I don't know. Maybe maybe this is too much of a stretch for me to try to do two things at once. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, what I said, what was the what was the defining moment when you knew that this was what you wanted to do? I would say... I I mean, it really wasn't, there wasn't a moment. Like I I drew it on a piece of paper at six that I wanted to do music, but I was voluntarily jumping up on picnic tables at the age of two years old. So I can't remember like the cognitive decision, like I'm going to do music. Like I always knew that that was my life, my life's work that I should be doing. And like, that was my goal. So it was always a matter of, when I was going to move to Nashville to write music as opposed to like it, you know? Right. Right. Um, yeah, that's amazing. You know, I've, I've, that's, you know, you jumped up on picnic tables and started entertaining, uh, at an early, early age. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. I know. There's definitely video, like family footage of that. No way. So it's, it's been, oh yeah. I have footage of me at two years old. Nice. Have you put that out on social media? I have not yet, but maybe I should. I was like trying to, I didn't know what a curtsy was at the time. So I was kind of almost like bowing in a weird, awkward way and pointing at people and telling them to clap. (laughs) You're a born entertainer. Yeah. I feel like it. I feel like I was just, wired for the pressure and the just just kind of a lot of the personality things that you do need to in order to take on this type of job it, it's a lot it's definitely a lot of work but you just have to love it so much you have to you have to be cut from a certain cloth to want to be an entertainer especially going down the road and and hitting the bar scenes or the the major event scenes it's it's not for the weak of heart uh, the hard work that you have to put in and the dedication and the hours. Um, I know most people hear you on the radio and they're like, wow, that's really, you know, and, and uh, they just don't understand the time that's put behind it. All the, all the hours spent rehearsing and all the hours in the recording studio and uh, all the traveling and all that, you know, and, and uh, that's why I, I bring you guys on here so we can promote you and, and get you a little further out there. I think the first time that we met, was uh two years ago in key west at meeting of the minds it was it was at the table and i remember we were walking up we were just exploring everything i had only been to meeting the minds like that was my second time so i was just trying to get the lay of the land and explore and you guys had this amazing setup and 
just, we just sat down right then and there. Yeah, it was you and uh, Crystal, and uh, I yeah. was I was engineering for Harry, and, and Harry interviewed you, and it was a really awesome awesome interview, and uh, and um, it's like you guys are amazing. And then I heard you live, and and uh, I became a fan instantly. You know, so uh, I think I think Aww. you. Hey, you know what? Thank you so much. You look like a country star. You know, you're gorgeous and <laughs> and you have the upfront personality and, and you just rock. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's um yeah, it's definitely very competitive like you know, job to go into. It's like knowing you you kinda of have to be a little crazy and and just relentless to take on this type of job, but uh I feel like every creative, as you know, or we're all a little bit just weird and a little bit crazy and, and willing to to do the things of, of what it takes. It means long hours and so be it for what it means because we like what we do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you've carved out a unique sound and style for yourself. How would you describe your style and how did you develop it? Yeah, so in in developing circumstances, I really do feel like I have adapted this like rock thing, a little edge in my voice. There's like these rock moments that happen, and that's really because I'm from the Midwest. 80s rock is is fluent and happening and flowing up there all the time. That will never die, and so that I feel like seeped in. I've also always loved like the blues and funk music and 70s music. So I feel like that's deep in in ways of chords or like funky bass lines um, or even my timing in uh, like lyrics or the timing of, of how I spin things. It's sometimes like, you know, more unique than just your typical country uh, music or, you know, music, like beat, beat songs that you hear. So I just kind of add a, those different flavors are from that. And, um, I was told recently that it's kind of like Jody Messina meets Susan Tedeschi meets like Casey Musgraves if I'm in if I'm in my softer moment or Miranda Lambert if I'm in like my sassy yeah. with those the two in the show one. And I was like, well, I I mean, I'm not going to argue with that. That that's awesome. Yeah, I feel like that's the closest any description has gotten. Yet to this day, I'm I'm all ears if you have any feedback that I'm kind of just like, all right. I mean that that, that sounds close. Sounds good. <laughs> well, if you guys out there listening have a, a description and you've seen Kirsty out there live, uh, uh, you can email me at uh, Dave Roush seven 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 at gmail dot com. That's D A V E R O U S H seven 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 at gmail dot com, and I'll make sure I get them back to Kirsty. <laughs> So yeah, that would be so awesome. Yeah, you know, uh, my this is my twelfth show, I think, so far, and um, you know, it it just keeps getting better and better and better. And I love that I'm booked through the first of next year uh, with some amazing talent. Uh, and that's... yeah, I, I'm just like, wow. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, I mean that that is so. I tried this once before, and I've said this several times on my shows, that uh, I tried this in Florida when I was down there, and uh, it just didn't fit. But now I have, here in Mexico, I have my own studio right out. I mean, I walk 10, 10 paces from my house, and I'm in my studio. So it's a little easier for me here, and uh, the environment just has me in a more relaxed, and uh, I'm happy all the time here, so... Yeah, we're at 5,000 feet. The temperature is amazing. And, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have some of your music. 5,000 feet, yeah. We're, if you look up um, Lake Chapala, it, we're south, south of of Guadalajara, Guadalajara, uh, 35 minutes. It's the largest lake in Mexico. And I'm on the North Shore and I'm about a quarter mile from the lake. And uh, everything here is uphill, downhill. Okay. Yeah. I'm, and, lo- I'm looking at it on the um, on the map, on the computer. It's, it's pretty cool. 
Yeah, it's it's a, a kind of a shallow lake, and it, on the south side of the lake, there's a, a semi-active volcano, so the the water here is pretty warm, um, and you don't see it, but it's all straight up and down mountains until you come to the lake. So everything here is up and down. It's I get I'm probably in the best shape I've been in my life, just walking twice a day mm-hmm. down to the lake and back up. I mean, it's uh, probably. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, I have been not super close, but Puerto Vallarta, and um, where was, and Cayman, no, not, what's the other, like the biggest? Cancun? Tourist city there. Yeah. Cancun, yeah, those are the two places I've been in Mexico. Right. So I've only went twice. Puerto Vallarta, we're about uh, four hours from Puerto Vallarta, but we're straight across from there. Okay. Hmm. It's so big on the computer. <laughs> All right. So I have uh, one of your songs pulled up. It's Beaches Be Crazy. Uh, why don't you give us a little uh, info on Beaches Be Crazy? Yeah, this song I sat down with Scott Southworth for the first time to write. And I he went down to his his house in the holler of Tennessee, very uh, southern of, of Nashville. And he has been holding on and hoarding this title for three years. And he said he was going to find the perfect female trap rocker that he felt like could pull off this song, like this title. And we just got to talk to him. I was telling him how I've been, I've been writing a bunch of beat songs and how it all started. And he threw that title out at me and I was all about it. So we, we just wrote the song that day and, had a blast looking up different different places and what places are known for and obviously places we've been to where we know what they're known for and we put it all together and, and I'm really happy with the song how the song came out and there's also like a like a Steven Tyler moment a little bit at the end of the chorus. And so it's just it was really fun. And then obviously doing production for this and being a part of that process. And well, most of the ways was just incredible. It is so much fun to put this song in there. All right. Without further ado, here's Thirsty Krause and Beaches Be Crazy.
Oh, yeah. That is a great song, Kirsty. I like that. Beaches be crazy. Yay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I've been loving the response when I play it live. And so to be able to also say that I have it recorded has been pretty cool for people to be able to check out and, and hear it on the radio. So thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, when you go out on tour, do you uh, hire a band, or do you have a band that, that goes with you when you go out playing around? I have, like, a group of people that I will ask, and that we can stay playing with. And so there's, I have a group chat with them, and, and if one is not available for some reason, I mean, most of the time I'm asking them enough in advance uh, that they are available. But, yeah, it just depends on what state I'm going to and and who's available, but a really good group of guys that I've met here in town in, in Nashville. And I have used people and played with people in like Wisconsin when I've gone up there. I've played with different people like in Florida when I've gone down there. It just depends on the, the situation, but it's always a good time when I can bring my, my go-to people on the road. That's amazing. Yeah. So do you have any one or two of your uh, steady people you want to give a shout out to? Yeah. Shout out to Roger and Mike today and Ben Perrin on guitar. We give those, those guys a shout out. They're, they're awesome. Um, also Thomas Larson has been nothing but amazing on, on guitar as well. And just so supportive of what I'm doing. And that's, that's the ideal. You get guys that are just like, Deeper into the music, they get it. They get what you're going after, and and they just want to be a part of it. Nice, nice. Yeah, I just recently formed a new band, and our first gig is on the 17th, and I'm excited. What really drew me down here was the the musicians here. The music is here. It's it's so much live music here. You wouldn't you'd be loving it. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I have a, my fiddle player is a two-time Hall of Fame inductee, Jim Baker. He's, he's an amazing fiddle player and we have fun. Nice. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, what's the reaction when you, when you play uh, Beaches Be Crazy? I mean, are, are they going nuts for it? I definitely see people looking up and they're like, if, if that's the singing, like, what if he saying? Because I swear if I'm playing it live, I have to make sure I really enunciate these. Because <laughs> when I hold out the E a little bit longer, they're like, it, what? Yeah. I'm, I play a lot in family friends, like, you know, family friendly events and, and things like that. So I, I definitely am not not trying to not be family friendly. It's just, it's just for a little belly laugh. But, uh, yeah, I definitely can see their faces, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to make sure I have to pee out. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, well, it's like, oh, dang. Yeah, that went over well, but not with the moms of little kids sitting in the front row. Yeah. Yeah, I I, right. I, I get that. I mean, most of my shows are adults, so I don't have to watch too much language. But, I, you know, it's not really a good practice when you're in professional stuff like that to uh, use curse words. I mean... There's a right time, right place for everything, and a lot of times music isn't one of them unless it's uh, in your song and it is uh, creatively okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I I agree with you. And it is like moments like after a show, and when a mom comes up with their kids or like a little girl or a little boy, and and they're so excited to meet me like that. Those moments are are everything to me. Like I hold those very dear in my heart. And so I by no means want to get into a space where those moments like that can't happen. You know, like it's it's so important to me to be able to connect and get on their level and tell them that whatever they set their mind to, 
exactly go at it with their full heart and believe that they can do it and that's those moments i i just love oh yeah exactly you know um well let's move on a little bit let's talk about another one of your uh, songs it's uh tied down okay give us a little bit of information on tied down yeah oh yeah so it was our first right another first right with my friend mark Mull and we purposely got together we were like hey i i noticed i told them all about the truck rock community and about just people that love just all this stuff all these things that he already loved. he just had no idea and i'm just constantly trying to spread the good word that it should be in a grammar category i mean come on so but uh so mark and i sat down and we our goal was to write a song like tied down uh, super fun uh, duet, um, something that we could have fun with and really like get in the studio and have the band like rock out, uh, but, but have it feel so good. And so we started playing the guitar part and I started singing a melody and I started singing stuff in real time about what was happening. And we were, we were both talking about how we can barely take care of a plant, much less an animal, <laughs> because we're always on the road all the time as, as artists. And so I just started singing, like, I can barely keep my plants alive. And then his cat was like, was, his cat was not feeling well. And so I just sang, like, the other day my cat almost died. And he's like, <laughs> he started laughing. I was like, is that the sandwich juice? <laughs> like, no, let's put it in there. Um, and, you know, full disclosure, his cat has now passed away. Jesse was very, very old. So, like, more than 12 years old. But, uh, yeah, now we have this little, that little part of the song to remember his song. Well, what's his cat's name? In general, the song is just about, the cat was named Jesse. Jesse. Right. Well, this one goes out to Jesse. And uh, <laughs> this is Tied Down.
Yeah. All right. Tied down. That's a cool song. Yes. Thank you. I I literally love performing that song live. And I think it's a song where people must be able to kind of sing along quickly because I love when people just, they start singing along. And I'm like, yeah. Either you pick that up fast or you know the song. But either way, I'm happy. It's, it's really cool when they start singing the words to your song. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of songs, let's go into one that uh, it crosses over. It's been on the Cruising Country Top 40 Countdown, and it's done well. Uh, Dabba Dolly. I, that was so cool that Dabba Dolly made the Cruising Country Top 40 Countdown. That was awesome. So thank you so much for uh, supporting that song. Absolutely. Uh, the fans help put it on there, too. Uh, you guys promote your music. We promote it. We and and I love the top forty, uh, cruising country top forty because it just it's a really cool show and I do it live so it, it it's nice you know it, it's three hours of fun I, it goes by faster than you know anyway so uh, yeah let, yeah uh, you did this with Christy Huff right I did and she's got an amazing yeah shout out to Christy Huff. She does have such a unique, like, California-style country, like, chill, but butter. Her voice is like butter. Mm, yes. Shout out to her. She just got married, uh, like, last weekend. I was up. I couldn't go because I was at the Wisconsin State Fair, but I definitely texted her that weekend and was like, I'm loving all these pictures. I wish I could be there. And so I'm so happy for her, and congratulations on, on her marriage. Congratulations, Christy. Yeah. Well, um, let's put it on. Here's Dabba Dolly. Been feeling down and not as strong. So I put my hair up high. So fit for a day like this. All you gotta do is add some shine. A little dab of dab.
a little dab of dolly. What a fantastic song, Kirsty. That's I, I love this song. Yeah, good. Thank you so much. Yeah, you, your your songs are really interesting, and and like you said, they tell the story. Um, have you met Dolly Parton? I have not had a chance to meet her yet. I think the closest thing right now, I have some feelings out. I'm just patiently waiting and praying to the Lord above. But uh, I am scheduled to play out at Dollywood, which I'm about to announce like publicly on the socials, like, you know, and, and Sarah Flyer for that. But I get to play for a weekend out there in October. So, Pretty excited about that just to see. I haven't been to Hollywood since I was 11 years old. Wow. So I, I know it changed a ton, and I'm excited to get out there and, and just be able to see everything and, and celebrate Dolly in a whole new way. I, I listened to a lot of like her interviews and her books. and These are amazing. Yeah, I lost Kirsty. Kirsty, if you're out there, call me back. Or I will call you back. Yeah. So that was crazy. Hey, that was Kirsty Krause and David Dolly. And uh, I lost you. So state your name after the call. Oh, no. We'll try to connect you. <laughs> Kirsty, this is Dave Roush on the Dave Roush Show. Uh, you're probably getting this. There you are. Are you back? Hey. hey. What the hell? Oh my goodness. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Did, wait, is the call no longer happening? I called you back and I went to voicemail. <laughs> no, it's all good. I went to voicemail. I was like, oh. But uh, so you have a weird voicemail. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, Dab and Dolly, and, and we were talking about Dollywood and going there in October. Uh, don't announce a date because you want to unveil it somewhere else. And that's cool. I'm totally super honored to be hosting at Dollywood. Um, they're they're pretty, you know, strict about who they have out there. So I'm just excited to be able to celebrate that song in that way and also just get to know Dolly more by walking around her place and, and seeing Dollywood. Last time I was there, I was like 11 years old. So it's it's going to mean a whole lot to me, and, and I'm really excited. And hopefully one day I will get to meet her and, so we'll definitely be pulling up this song, uh, whether I play it for a live or play a, play that recording. I hope she I hope she enjoys. I think she will. If everybody that I know likes it and loves it, I think Dolly will have a fun time with it. All right. So you sent me a bonus song, and uh, I listened to it, and I really like it. And it's called something new. This um this is a song that. I wrote with one of my friends, his name is Joe Fly, and I remember leaving the house that day and thinking, like, I, I was, my producer asked me at the time, like, oh, you're writing with Joe, are you guys starting something new, or are you guys uh, finishing up an old song? And I kind of looked, and it just hit me differently, that question, I was like, we're starting something new, and I think it hit me differently, because I knew I was going in to write a song about my essentially moving to Nashville kind of song. And I remember just being like, that's what's going to be called. Something new. And I'm starting something new. And so that's really where the title came. And, and I knew it was going to be about leaving my home state, Wisconsin, traveling nine hours south and, and living in Nashville away from the family. So this is kind of what just poured out to me on that day. And I'm so glad you like it. No. It's kind of doo -y. It has a little doo -wop flair to it. Well, let's check it out. So here is Kirsty Krause and something new.
Yeah, all right, something new. Dang, that's a sweet song. It literally brings me so much joy. Um, I mean, a lot of these, like when I when I write these songs and and get to get to share them out, it's like it really is like sharing a part of my soul. And that song is it's very deeply important to me just because it is it is exactly my story. So I'm so happy that. You dig it. It's super fun. Well, um, I think everybody digs you, girl. You're uh, you're quite the entertainer. Hey, let everybody know where you're at, where you can be found, where you can be heard, where you're playing next. Go ahead and give a shout out to yourself. Yes. Which is awesome. Well, shout out to uh, me because my name is actually my given name. is the same as my artist name. It always has been. <laughs> So uh, you can go on firstyfrouse.com, and firsty is spelled like Firsty Alley, and Frouse, like Alton Krause. And um, yeah, you can go on the, on the website or Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, literally all that stuff. I'm TikTok. I'm on it. So uh, I'd love to connect on whatever platform you all feel comfortable. I would, I would love to connect with you and, and just have you be a part of the journey. So feel free to, to join us. Nice. Well, Kirsty, it's been a blast talking with you and listening to your songs. Um, here at uh, Cruising Country Radio, we wish you all the best. And uh, please let me have your, your new stuff coming out as soon as you can so I can debut it uh, if your producer will let me. Oh, I absolutely will. And uh, putting it out there now, I may have a little holiday present for everybody so i'm really excited about that um but dave you have such great energy and and vibe so i just am so thankful that you even want to ask me as an artist to come on your show and i'm absolutely proud of you for being booked up till 2025 and it's just it's just really cool to see other people do do things that they love and be so successful so it's just like i love it and I appreciate you. 
All right, my friend. Well, you have a great day, and uh, I hope you'll come back on our show. Um, I want to bring you back on as soon as I can. Thank you very much. All right. We'll see you later. Bye, Kirsty. Bye. Bye. Thanks for cruising along with us on the Dave Rouse Show today. Don't forget to catch us every Monday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time on CruisingCountryRadio.com, where the best country music meets engaging conversations. Miss an episode? Episodes will be played on Sundays at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Until next time, keep the music playing and the good times rolling. See you next Monday on the Dave Rouse Show, www.cruisingcountry.com. All country, all original, all the time.